Okay, let's dive in. Um, welcome everyone to the 444 Implementers call. Um, Roberto, just confirm you're going to be taking notes this time. Does that sound good? Yes, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I will take awesome. notes. Um, for folks who want to follow along on the notes, uh, you can hear. Um, uh, I'm going to be running the call because Tim's on a plane. I'm Jesse. Um, I work for Coinbase. I've been working on the for the last six months. Um, uh, before we dive into the agenda, I wanted to just quickly check and see there's a few out outstanding action items um, uh, that I wasn't sure whether we followed through on. Um, and they are these four. Let me actually just share my screen. Um, I think all these got better made progress on, so I'm going to check them off, but uh, let me know if, if otherwise. Um, okay, let's dive in. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the spec updates. Ansgar, uh, you mentioned that you had to jump on a flight, so why don't we start with your spec update? Um, I think the first one that's on the list is the modulus one, EIP 5864. Right, so um, that, that one basically, uh, I, I think it's, it's just ready to match. Uh, maybe if, it, if some people would want to have just one more sanity uh, look, uh, it ended up being slightly modified. I'm not sure if we talked about this last week to also return the degree, polynomial degree. Um, and I have a personal, like, small question mark there, just a, 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 as to best practices kind of concatenating the, the, the values um, uh, right now that um, the, the module is only um, basically an A-type value, uh, right now it's not padded. I think that makes sense. I also think it makes sense that, that the uh, leading and then the 32 byte value kind of following uh, as a small frequency gain in case you want to use um, uh, basically what, once, you, once you copy it. I think we're uh, having a hard time hearing you because of the background noise. Um, um, maybe try talking a little bit closer to the mic, a little slower. Okay, okay. Uh, let me. Maybe someone else go ahead and I find a better location. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, let's come back to the ons guard ones and he's going to do it. Uh, it looks like uh, there are three uh, specs that we merged. Um, the first one is the uh, get blobs v1 change to the execution API. Um, any additional context that folks want to share on that one? Um, I guess, yeah, that, that uh, was a proto one. Proto, any additional color to add there? No additional color. I think the the execution API is updated, so please Great. update the implementations too, if you haven't already. Awesome. Um, any questions on, on that, or folks have questions on the execution API if you want to be, be make available? Uh, yeah, just one question about this precompile. Um, execution spec includes uh, um, like some lines about verification of values passed to this um, precompile. Uh, and we do not verify X and Y values there. Uh, I mean, uh, when we verify uh, blobs, but we do verify it in this precompile. Can we delegate it to a cryptography library instead of validating it on execution side, client side? And just to make sure I understand, Alexi, I think you're asking about the execution specs rather than the execution APIs. Is that right? Or the engine uh, APIs? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's more about uh, point evaluation, uh, precompiled specification, yes. OK. Um, um, I think, I think. I think that's the intent is that we do want to move everything into go KZG. Um, but you're correct, right? Right now there's some implementations that are pieces of the implementation remain in the clients. Um, that's on the to-do list. 
Alexei, just so I, just so we can fully understand, what's the specific thing you're asking about? Yeah, yeah. Let, let me rephrase it like that. Uh, so. Uh, point evaluation precompile is described in the specification. It includes uh, um, just two lines I, I wanted to discuss. Uh, yeah. We are requested to verify that X and uh, Y values uh, uh, inputs of this precompile need, need to be verified being less than modulus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, should we move it to cryptography side and do not verify like uh, in execution client directly? Right, I, I think I see what you mean. Um, so the way I see it is that like uh, the pre-compile code um, kind of guides you into that X and Y are scalar elements and hence need to be smaller than the modulus. Uh, but you're right, but most likely in your implementation, you're gonna like, you know, wrap it into a type that does the modulus check um, inside of it. Now you're saying whether we want to move this entire thing into the KZG library, as in that the library should receive like, integers or bytes or something and do the precompile itself. Yeah, yeah, you read my mind, exactly. Right. Um, okay, uh, I, I don't have, uh, we, we, we can, if, if you think that is better for you because you're uh, managing less cryptographic burden on your side, uh, we should consider it. You're right that there is some leaky uh, leaks like abstraction leaks there. Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, I mean, the point evaluation, uh, so sorry, the KSAG proof um, uh, pretty much takes bytes, right? Like the API. Does it? Does it not? You mean uh, the CKCG? I mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I, I maybe not for this call. I can make a note about this, about like, you know, figuring out the interface of the precompile for client devs and uh, work on it offline so that we don't hog the call. Yep, thanks. Yeah, feel free to bring this up in the, the um, execution implementation, the implementation tracker. Um, I did have a chat with um, Proto just yesterday, in fact, about um, some of the stuff being moved in Go KZG. So we can probably align over there. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure, just to make sure I fully understand what the outcome of that back and forth was between George and Alexei is that. Do we think we want to make a change to the Go CG, Go KCG, um, CKCG interfaces and the interfaces that we defined in the consensus specs? Uh, actually, it's not uh, like required because uh, we already have like byte uh, byte arrays based interface there. Uh, I, I'm not sure that. Uh, we need to additionally verify this uh, modulus uh, constraint for X and Y because uh, probably it uh, uh, will be done on cryptography side too. Uh, I mean, cryptography library side too. Uh, so we do this twice and we need to uh, unmarshal these values. I mean, to uh, transform it to integers to compare with this modulus and uh, if we could just pass bytes uh, to uh, the cryptography implementation, uh, so we could uh, save some like execution time, I don't know, and write less code. Um, yeah, it, uh, it could be much more obvious if we could check this specification. It includes these checks for modulus and uh, I, I, I just don't see we need it uh, there. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, this is a fair request. Um, presumably 
the specifically the verify case that you approved could just check the modulus is within bounds. Um, the only like not really a major concern is like the those assertions lets lets us bail out early if the user provides like invalid points um, because we do like expensive like uh, the case two version hash later. If we were to move that to the case two library, then um, if the user provided like invalid points, then we'll end up like doing the hash thing, which is not good, which is not good, a good thing to do like in, if you're like in the EVM. So the alternative is to move the entire function, um, kind of like what George was saying, have that implemented by GoKCG, then client implementers don't have to worry about all that crypto stuff. Um, but I think we still do need, need to like keep the assertions prior to like the verified case you proof so we can fail early in the event of an error. Um, I'm sorry, Muffy, which hash are you talking about? The pre-compile doesn't have any hashing, does it? Or does uh, it have? No. The, I'm looking at the spec right now, the KCG version hash. Yeah, All it's doing is, ah. yeah. Okay, and you want that to fail. Uh, you want the, the basic assertions to trigger before the hashing happens. Yes. Okay, I see. Um, okay, as you say that it may be indeed uh, be better uh, than just uh, Heavy then provide uh, that heavy calculations before basic checks. Let it stay probably, yeah. Right. I mean, Alexey, if you're saying that this is gonna make your life easier, I think, and since CKZG is a very like tailor-made library for this specific purpose, I think that a good like indicator that we should uh, make the interface better. Now, in terms of how the spec should look like, uh, because it's not like, it's like Python, so it's not typed. I don't see how the actual assert lines can be completely removed because that's like the kind of like the implicit uh, thing that they are scalar types. I, I, I don't know how this the, the spec will look like if we change the interface, but uh, I agree that we should look into the interface to make it nicer for developers. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just found this uh, basic checks quite useful. So um, maybe the interface can be improved by, but uh, my um, like, statement was just about this uh, two basic checks uh, that mm -hmm. I did not find useful uh, previously. So it's okay now, looks okay for me. Okay, so I think we can resolve this. It, it is, is the kind of takeaway that George and Kev are going to look at whether there's an interface change we want to make here to the CKCG to add another function? Yeah, potentially. Okay, well, let's, let's, Roberto, let's create an action item to do that. And if you guys decide no, I think that that seems like a reasonable takeaway as well. Sounds good. Great. Um, while we're on the topic of cryptography, um, George, uh, this, the, the last cryptography spec API change got merged. Any other like context to share there? No, I don't think so. I think the, 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 the PR got merged, the interface got simplified. Um, apparently maybe not simplified enough based on Alex's comments, but yeah, all in all, I think it's like a simplification. So not much to report there. If there are any questions, we also have like a CKZG Telegram group that might be a bit more uh, specific if you have questions of how to interface with CKZG, uh, talking to the client developers here. Yeah. And confirm me, confirm, uh, let me know if that's right, wrong, but I believe CKZG now implements these interfaces for client developers who want to be leveraging that. Is that right? Uh, what's that? Can you say that, that question again? Does, C, does CKCG implement the new interfaces from uh, the 303A change? 
Uh, so that, 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 that's actually a good question. I'm not sure which, um, like I know Ramana had the coronavirus at some point. So I don't know if the branch is fully up to date with the super new, like there is a branch with a new interface. I just don't know if it's like the main branch or not. I think it is. Dunker, do you remember? Um, I believe he merged it into the um, 4844 branch now. Yeah, that we merged it as far as right. I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's in the 4844 branch. Okay. So I, yeah, I had ready. another question about. Sorry, I had another question about the interface. So, like for the load trusted setup uh, function, basically, is that how we are planning to uh, load all the trusted setup uh, values uh, for the devnet, like through a file? Yes, exactly. That 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 function is suppose you you pass it like the trusted set of parameters. Let that be devnet. Let that be minimal. Let that be whatever mainnet, and it it loads it into the library to do the appropriate steps on the other functions. Okay. Awesome. So I guess just a summary there for client developers who are doing implementation, the CKCG4844 branch now supports the new cryptography interface um, that was just merged. Um, and so that should make uh, inter implementation much easier. I also know that at, uh, we, we now have JavaScript bindings available for that, um, which might be useful for Ethereum JS, who I saw the um, implementation, who's starting implementation. And then I believe that there are Rust bindings and Java bindings as well. But maybe someone else can chime in on, on that to confirm. I'm working on the Rust bindings right now. I like hope to have a PR by tomorrow, end of the day. I don't think the awesome. Java, Java binding is up to date because there was a Java binding on the original KeyZG uh, repo, but now uh, it needs to be adapted with the new interface. And I see also that all the bindings are in the repo itself, while the original one was a separate repo. Oh, so, yeah, the Java binding needs to be worked at, uh, at the moment. Yeah, and the, the our our library with uh, that supports multiple uh, ECC backends. Uh, currently, we have updated uh, interface for the OCT, uh backend. So for those who need the Rust uh, library, they can use it. Are there any clients that don't currently have a uh, like clear path on? Um, the cryptography library to use for their implementation. Okay, Enrico, on the on the Java side, um, is that currently blocking y'all? Do you guys have a path to update that uh, those bindings? Uh, we were discussing with the Bezu team because actually Tech and Bezu are, as far as I know, the, the only clients that are requiring the Java bindings. Um, we have uh, uh, definitely a bunch of work before makes this um, binding really um, you know, required. So we are kind of uh, um, planning internally the timing for start working on it. Uh, but yeah, definitely if uh, there are some help from outside will be appreciated. Otherwise, at some point, uh, the techo team or the Bezu team will, will start working on it. Assumption is that it should be an easy binding, but yeah, I'm not an expert on that. So don't, don't have a clear idea. Okay, sounds good. 
Well, I will comment uh, an observation that you know two weeks ago there there was uncertainty around the crypto APIs. There's uncertainty around the crypto libraries, and now we have a good crypto library, strong APIs, and most findings on track, which seems like a lot of great progress. So nice job, everyone. Um, okay, going to keep us moving. Uh, Anskar posted updates in his um, on his few things. So I'm just going to talk through what he shared in the channel. The first one is the uh, modulus change. Uh, that's ready for merge. Um, uh, it now returns the, the modulus precompile, or the precompile now returns two values, degree and modulus. Um, uh, and he'd love one person's eyes to double check the encoding, maybe Don Crod. Um, or, or yeah, probably Don Crowd's the right person to look at that. And otherwise, we're ready to merge. Any any client, anyone have questions on the that that change in terms of returning the modulus from the precompile? Don Crowd wrote the encoding. Okay, maybe someone else. I mean, the current encoding is literally just uh, eight bytes for the length for the number of elements and uh, 32 bytes for the modulus. Um, yeah, so it's there's no encoding. It's literally there's just those two values concatenated. So um, yeah, I don't know if anyone has an opinion on this. Like, I don't know how these things are usually done. Right, that, that was basically my only kind of question, like just to make double check, we kind of keep keep with how pre-compiled handle this usually, um, and whether there's, for example, a preference. To me, it feels like this ordering, basically having the not 32-byte value first is slightly preferable because um, it makes loading from memory, once it's once it's written to memory, uh, slightly more efficient because then once you load it, you don't have to mask the leading bytes because you can just take a memory location with leading zeros anyway or something. I'm not sure if compilers are smart enough to do this anyway, and it will be a very small efficiency gain. Um, but these kind of things, just basically make sure that um, this is kind of the, the standard way we do this. But other than that, I think that yeah, very too much. David, how are your perspectives on that encoding? I think it's fine. You can just go ahead with it. At least. Great. Sure should be the the way merge. Way to do it. Sounds great. Um, so the next one, I'm just going to keep giving high-level overview uh, on Scar, but let me know if you want to jump in. Um, reducing the throughput of blobs, uh, values provided in the PR are currently 256 kilobytes as a target and 512 megabytes, um, reduced down from one megabyte and two megabytes. Um, uh, that's kind of like, we're, yeah, we're going to talk about the test we're going to run later, but that's the current proposal from Unscar. Anyone have any questions or thoughts on that? Unscar, one question I had is, do we want to wait until after we run the kind of network tests to merge this fully? Um, or do you think it makes sense to kind of merge this and then we can readjust back upwards if necessary? My weak preference would be the latter, just because it seems like the same default, but um, I think either works. Anyone have strong opinions? It's an easy parameter update, so. Great. Well, Ansgar, I'd say let's, let's, let's move forward with merging that, and we can always adjust it now um, if, we, if we need to. Adjust it later if we need to. Um, and then the last one uh, is the PR to set a minimum data gas price. Um, there's been a bunch of discussion on the PR, but no consensus reached for now. Um, this is, again, uh, just a constant that we can change in the future. Um, uh, but anyone have any commentary or questions there? Who is driving that investigation? Or is it just tabled for now? I think Onscar is the running point on it.
Okay, I think we will leave that one open. Again, it's just a config change, so it shouldn't, shouldn't block anything on the client implementation. Um, two other spec updates that I want to talk through. One that just got merged, um, uh, and this was uh, Proto, one from you from a while ago, uh, to, I think, just bring everything in line with the new fee market update. Uh, on the consensus specs, any additional commentary to add there? Um, I reviewed it, but you should credit Ansgar. And I think Ansgar is boarding his flight, so it's not able to comment. Um, yeah, I think the fee market changes are ready and like they're merged, so you can continue with implementation there. Does anyone have any questions on the new fee market specification? Or is, is blocked on that in implementation today? We do have some okay. tests for fee market implementation in the DevNet v3, DevNet v2 as well as the DevNet v3, um, in case anyone is implementing clients. And are those, is that, are those in the interop repo? Is that what you're saying, Roberto? Yeah, um, maybe Mofi could speak better to it. He's someone that implemented it. But um, yeah, they're, um, they're um, spec level tests. So they basically fire up the clients and um, upload a few blobs and, and check things. So if your client is integrated, you should be able to run those. Awesome. Okay, uh, one last spec update that is in the agenda to discuss, I believe. Oh no, there's a, actually one more after this. Um, and this is yours, Mofi, the rebase of 4.4.4 on Capella. Can you give a quick status update on that, uh, kind of where things are and what the next steps are? Yeah, um, right now it's blocked on the withdrawals PR. Um, we're waiting to get that merged in so that I can we base 444 on top of that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. I think we've gotten consensus of uh, how the rebase should look like and how we want to do testing. All that's left is to update the uh, withdrawal capital structures and update the PR. And we should have that merged by tomorrow morning. Splendid. Great. So this was one of the, this was probably the biggest open question in the last implementers call, but with this resolved, um, we are planning to kind of, I, actually, let's talk about DevNet 3 in a second, but um, does anyone have any kind of questions on uh, the decision around rebasing 4.4.4 on top of Capella and how that will change kind of the implementation? Okay, sweet. Okay, the last um, uh, spec, prospective spec changes. Terrence, um, I saw you open up a PR to discuss a few things. Would you mind giving us a quick overview there? Yeah, hello everyone. So I opened an issue this morning. There are a few more to do's that from what I have observed over the last few weeks. So the first one, which is my fault, I didn't fix this, is that um, right now the block and blobs are gossiped together, but we should probably add a note saying that, hey, the old beacon block gossip will no longer be supported. Cause I think there's some confusions that people are assuming that we will still be supporting the block uh, gossip topic, which we will not. So that should be easy. Just a few lines of notes in the consensus networking spec. Yeah. Any questions on that? If not, the second one is that we currently do not have a way to request blob by 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 um by um root, right? Because now if a 
block is missing from attestation, you, you can request a block by root, but we don't have a way to request the block by root, right? So there's two ways to go about it. The first way is to implement a block by root method. The second way is just implement the block and block by root method, just assuming they're coupled together. I'm leaning towards the second way just because it's just easier. You can avoid two calls. And um, sounds like um, sounds like there's a few people who agree with me on the Discord channel. So I'm wondering if people have feedback on this or is there, yeah, is there what people prefer? So the range requests, we're going to keep them separate, right? Sounds like it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, so uh, for, the, for the range request, we're actually just discussing this too. But like, we were thinking it might be better to have a range request with both the block and blob, and then just a separate block range request. Just because, like, at no point you can't do anything if you just have a blob. So, like, why would we be asking for a bunch of blobs? Yeah, well, I tend to agree because I don't, I don't see how a client ends up having only a block at this point if you if we have the main topic that gives us the coupled version right well, with only a block after if the the blob pruning depth is less than the block pruning depth so this that would be a reason to keep the blocks by range request but i mean we could just have a sec separate request for blob and block by range yeah, my, my argument for keeping those separate is that, you know, historic sync, it, essentially you can keep historic sync and add like stable and not have to think about it and add syncing the blobs um, and rather than reworking to then have to use both of these methods. Um, and again, my argument is in the future, assuming full sharding, you would still do full block sync and that element and you would not do the kind of the blob sync which became additive um and so that allows us to kind of keep this core machinery totally stable um i at the end of the day like i'm not engineering it so i could be convinced otherwise i think one more like argument to have them separate just so you can sync both in parallel which but then you also have this implement implementation like complexity like what happens if one gets here without the another so I think it's a lot simpler to have them coupled from the implementation perspective. Yeah, I agree. Because uh, if you make it separate, then the, then the, uh, the the handling of thing or the two thing, thing two different things that might be go wrong, and you start also thinking about optimistically. Uh, validate the block while we are you're retrieving the blobs when you you give up when you go another try so there are a lot of complexity there if you keep it separate i guess i think about it as just have the blobs as a dependency once i have a range of blocks get the range of blobs rather than trying to interleave them because then you get your historic block syncing you don't have to touch it all and then you just have this kind of secondary follow process that ultimately would be pruned out of the code base so it allows for that to remain totally separate. Whereas if, because there are gonna be different pruning depths on blobs and blocks and what you would be retrieving historically, then you now have to like interweave, you have to totally change your previous sync process to now consider, you know, am I doing this method or that method? And then once we go to full sharding, you'd have to then change it again. Um, again, that's my argument. I will leave it there. So like in the event of full sharding, can we just reuse the coupled request response RBCs and then just leave the sidecars like zeroed out? Um, sure. Then you have a kludge where you're still like switching between the two um, because the, you're still going to have to account for different printing depths or you're going to change a constant to assume the printing depths are the same because now that they're zeroed, I mean, sure, there's plenty of ways to try to work it cleanly. We can emulate the coupled request response methods by just calling one after the other. 
it's not so much a consistency issue as it is with gossip up since we are talking to the same pair so but we would still have to handle the failure cases is the thing where like one peer just doesn't give us one of the two things um yeah and, and generally i feel like with the the moving window for pruning like that's not too much of an issue so much as like we're not at the like we have some margin of error past where we're pruning where all the clients just like still have blobs um and yeah generally it's like having um the blob and block like separately looks simpler but i think because we have to deal with these edge cases that might not ever happen it makes it more complex um and then just using one request at some range and a different request at another range generally an implementation i think is actually simpler and, and then what happens when i'm my clock's slightly off and i make a blobs by block and blobs by range request that is out of your printing depth do i return zeros you know there ends up being edge cases there as well Right. I think that could be resolved generally by just like in implementation, we don't specific specifically code to this to like the minimum epoch depth for like what you serve, but just don't request past it. If you happen to accidentally request past it, like clients should have like some epochs of margin of error. Um, yeah. And then to the point of like, is it more performant to um, download blocks and blobs in parallel as opposed to like having one big request? Uh, Diva made the point that a bottleneck is actually processing, it's not download. And if you are requesting them separately, you can't process them until you have both. So it doesn't really make a difference. I don't think we'll be able to come to like a conclusion from this call. So should we just um, follow up on the issue itself? Yeah, that's what I was about to suggest. That makes sense to me. Uh, and Which I also, issue? it's um, 3087. But yeah, I was also, um discussing so my second point was basically we need a blobs by root method or we need a block and block by root method right so um any objection for have, having them coupled for um by root the thing with the by root request response methods is that some other clients like nimbus have made the case in the past that sync should not rely on these by root methods as much. And maybe even only have these by root methods supported for a recent part of the history. I saying it's much easier to index the finalized data linearly and then store it in optimized ways on disk and so on. We have whole new file formats for this and everything. And then creating this by root method just kind of ruins that by introducing like an additional database index to find everything by root. Yeah, this is, I feel like this is more for like missing block from attestation, more like from the current epoch or the last few slots, which you right. need to, so right. Let's say if we introduce it, we can limit the usage of this to the more recent part of the chain so that we don't require like additional database changes in clients. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, I feel, but I also feel like this is more like a general issue than for a for, for specific, right? Just... 
So if we repeat the same issue, then we are, make it much harder to clean up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's all I have. Those are the three basically questions or ongoing discussions I want to follow up on. Just to confirm where we're leaving these on the first one, it sounds like we should just open that spec change. Yeah. Terrence, are you gonna are you gonna do that? Yeah, happy to. Great. Um, on the second one, it sounds like there's more discussion that we might need to have. Or are we? Yeah. Do we have a decision on the second one, or are we gonna open up a new PR for that one as well? I can open a PR, but we don't have to like merge it like right away and just let it like marinate and discuss and just see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. And then but the third one, it sounds like there's active discussion already. Right, right, right. Are any of these blocking, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I'm not as well versed in these domains. Are these kind of like core blocking spec changes or would they be more kind of like things that were, that will make the, yeah. Like how, how important is it to drive resolution on these over the next couple of weeks, do you think from a kind of like finalizing the spec perspective? Well, I think the second one is definitely important for the DevNet 3 purpose, just because like today, if you're missing a block, you cannot get a blob, then you're kind of stuck there. So the second one is definitely DevNet 3 blocking, but it's not so hard to for spec and also to implement. The third one, I think it's fine. I mean, you can we can spend a little bit more time on it just because like, I think it's for the DevNet 3 purpose, it's not super important to like batch track or batch sync. I mean, it's a nice to have, but 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 uh, but uh, but uh, it's not a blocker. Got it. Okay, well, I'm one for the second one, which seems like the more critical one. Um, do we think that there's a path to try and, I guess, is it something we can decide today? Or if not, what's kind of the path to getting it decided in the next couple of days so we can continue making progress towards 7F3? Yeah, just feedback from everyone. So I will open the PR and I will post a PR on Discord link. And um, yeah, just hoping for feedback from everyone. Okay, sounds good. Proto, it sounds like you have opinions there. And so I think you weighing in there and, and, and helping us nudge that along would be really helpful. Right, I'll review. Um, I think there's a nice compromise here where we do support the by root method in some form or another but we limit the by root usage to a time span not as long as the full by range uh, support so that we don't have to create a database index to support this method. Great. Okay, are there any other active spec changes or spec discussions that folks want to raise before we move on to discuss the DevNet 3? Okay, let's move on to discuss, discuss DevNet 3. Um, quickly wanted to just look at this um, Spec overview that we have. Can folks see my this screen now with DevNet three on it? I think yes. Yep. Awesome. Um, so I believe that there are no changes on the execution layer side. Um, we are going to include the modulus change that should merge, um, but there's nothing else new that we need to uh, do there. On the CL spec. Um, we have now merged the cryptography API. We've merged the fee market changes and we have a uh, resolution on the rebase on Capella. Let me just uh, quickly make these changes in line for doing it. We have, so these two are merged so we can take those out because they're in the main spec. Uh, and then the 
3052, we plan to keep that in, we plan to keep that in the, the DevNet. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. Um, and it sounds like we can have that this week. Correct? Yep. Um, and then it sounds like there's also one other, Terrence, the, the upcoming PR that you're talking about uh, um, with the, uh, with uh, allowing blob retrieval by uh, root. Yep. And does that have to be, do we have to block the DevNet or do we want to, to kind of put that in the critical path for the DevNet? I think so, just because like there's no way for us to proceed if today we are missing a block and we don't have a block. So you kind of deadlock there. So yeah, but it shouldn't yeah, be agree. that hard to yeah to make it happen. Okay. Any other EL or CL changes that folks are expecting to be part of the DevNet? Last time we had this upcoming PR to block broadcasting blob transactions by default. Did we do that? Is that just the gossip? Oh no, sorry. Yeah. That's... No, it was, it was basically changed to, and I think there was debate between Ansgar and Marius about whether we actually wanted this to be encoded in the spec or not. Um, I think that was, uh... My understanding is that it, it was like related to ETH 68 and not necessarily part of the VIP. I mean, Maris isn't here. Like, I remember like there were two approaches to blocking broadcast. One is to do it by the transaction type and the other is to um, do it by the size of the transactions. Um, I don't know which direction. We yeah. Went and I think the debate okay. was basically, do we need, do we need to actually include this in the spec or not? Um, and I, we, it looks like we have an, had an action item for Ansgar to update for specifying that blobs must only be announced. Um, but maybe that didn't get done. I was premature in resolving that action item. Um, so maybe we should follow. I, I don't think this is strictly blocking the DevNet, um, but we should follow up with Oh yeah, Ansgar is on the call still. Great, Ansgar, can you open the, the PR to, to do that? Yeah, great, thank you. Announcing and then they can pull? Yeah, exactly. Okay, because they're too large to be pushed on GET's default limit. Yeah, yeah. That was basically the compromise we came to at um, the DevCon workshops uh, to okay. make it That's easier for the clients to manage like DOS vectors. Um, okay, so we will get that in. And then this uh, engine get blobs by bundle, that one is merged, so we can just have it there. This includes withdrawal field as part of the engine API. I believe that that were blocked on 3052 on the CL spec to get that in there. Mofi, is that right? Yeah, 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 we're, we're definitely bringing that. Okay, so are you going to, um, once you, can, do we have a PR open for that? Or can you take an AI to um, open that PR once the CL spec change lands? Um, yeah, sure. Um, also relatedly, I think, should we also update the EIP? Because the EIP does specify like what the, the new header should look like because we're adding like the access data, data gas. Um, it's not a big deal because I think most client devs should understand that we should include withdrawals. But in this in this interest of completeness, uh, I think we should also update the EIP to just say that it has a dependency on withdrawals. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, so are we going to, are you going to take that as well? Sure. Okay, um, and I will make the note here, uh, upcoming PR to highlight dependency on withdrawals. Any other commentary? It looks like mostly it is the things that are actually, the modulus change is gonna merge and then we need to get the rebase on Capella um, and then around blob to go by root. But other than that, the scope is basically locked in. Any questions, thoughts, objections? Cool. I think with that, then I was wondering if it might make sense to do a quick client like roll call, what clients we're expecting to have um, or participation as part of the DevNet. Um, I, uh, we had Geth and Prism existing. Um, do folks want to quickly check in and say whether they're interested in participating in the DevNet or not? Uh, yeah, for Lighthouse, we definitely want to. Um, we're pretty far along in implementation, but currently working on um, integrating KCG and uh, fleshing out sync. So once we get that spec'd out, we can implement that. Yeah, another mind wants to join too. Uh, maybe not with everything working uh go i uh, see kzg library yeah needs some tests and attention and uh, other stuff not yet merged does that mean that you'd want like a smaller allocation of validators as a percentage of network yeah sorry i missed who who is that what which client Nethermind? Yes, yeah. yes. And then Roberto, how are you feeling about uh, Aragon at this point? Uh, yeah, I think it's very doable. We will do Aragon likely at this point. Any other Besu, Teku? Um, I know Nimbus hasn't ha had the bandwidth to get started. And I think that's the full set. Yeah, Teku very unlikely, I think. Very unlikely for Besu as well. All good. Okay, well, six client DevNet, I think would be pretty, um, pretty awesome. So uh, keep pushing in that direction. Um, do folks have a sense of like a high level target for when we'd want to be DevNet ready? Or ready for DevNet 3? I'd like to shoot for before the Thanksgiving holiday. I think that might be realistic. It's sort of like we need um, some degree of lag from after the specs completely stable. And like, I don't know, that'd be nice that before Thanksgiving, but I feel like we will need at least a week, more realistically two weeks of lag after the specs stable. So um, yeah. Yeah, I think we can stabilize the spec by Monday, Tuesday, next Monday, Tuesday. Um, with that timeline, do you, would like before thanks do it still be feasible? I uh, don't recall what Thanksgiving state is exactly, but. <laughs> it's I think the week it's, after it. That I seems challenging. I'd give us one week. Um, yeah, because there's a, coordination component that might make it difficult but 
I think we can get the development done by then, yeah. All right. Is the all core devs call this week on Thursday or is it next week on Thursday? This week. This week. And then is the next one on Thanksgiving on the 24th? Oh, sorry. I think it's muted. Yes. Okay. Um, Okay, it seems I'm like we Canadian, should be preliminary. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think uh, luckily we have a very global audience. Um, it seems like we should probably be pushing for the, the week after Thanksgiving to have the DevNet fully stood up based on what we know today. I think that make it more likely more teams could participate, which would be good. Yeah, I mean, come come Wednesday on that week, I just I think a number of US people are going to drop off for a few days. And so that means like trying to launch it on the 21st, the Monday, which given spec changes done, maybe the 14th, like that's a really tight turnaround. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't we preliminarily plan to launch on the 30th of November, um, which will be the day after our implementers call that week. Which will give us this week to basically confirm all the spec changes done. Um, next week to get implementation, the next two weeks to get implementation done, um, and then button up any loose ends that the first half of that week and launch DevNet 3. That sound reasonable to everyone? Uh, so let me just add this. Timing, targeting launch on 1130. We will make it by the end of November. Um, and I know we have all core devs on uh, Thursday of this week. Well, now I know. Um, and it seems like from a spec perspective, really the changes are the withdrawals change. Um, uh, and then this one conversation around uh, the blob retrieval by root, because uh, the modulus one is, is going to merge. Mofi, Terrence, oh, I guess Terrence just left. Um, I, I think the more we can kind of push to get those two spec changes, at least having a line of sight to being done, um, so that by the time we go into all core devs, we can say, hey, we're basically finalized from a spec perspective, I think the better. Yeah, seems good. Okay, um, we are at time. Uh, the last update that, the two other items here uh, that were prospectively on the agenda was the large block spam test. Um, and the readiness checklist. The readiness checklist, we can update async based on all of the, the progress here. In terms of the large block spam test, Dan, is Dan Lee here from Paradigm? No, it doesn't look like it. The, the, I can share an update from them. Um, we have, uh, Paradigm's gonna be running uh, the first iteration of that spam test on test nets, um, either this week or next week. Um, and then we'll move to mainnet, and that's going to start giving us data on kind of current network characteristics, um, which we'll be able to use to finalize the blob um, size and to just in, in general build our confidence around network. So if folks have questions um, or thoughts or want to be involved in those tests, um, there's a Telegram group that we have, um, and, and we can add you to it. Just let us know. Okay, I think that's all. Anyone have any final comments, questions, thoughts? I guess last, last ask from me, this is my first time ever running this kind of meeting 
in Ethereum development, if you have feedback um, or thoughts about how it could have run better, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm Jesse Pollack on Discord and Telegram and Twitter um, and, and would love any uh, thoughts on how I could uh, better show up for Ethereum. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye everyone. All right.